In this video, we're going to be talking about how to draw a force diagram or free body diagram. We have four examples that we're going to work out together. And we also have a quick reference guide on the side over here in red, which is going to help us identify when these particular forces are pushing or pulling on the object. So we're going to start off with the very first one, and we're just going to go down the list slowly for our first diagram. And then for the next three, we'll probably go through a little bit more quickly. So for our first picture, we have a boy going down a slide. So we're going to start at the top of our list. FG, a pull straight down from the earth. That is definitely present. FG is in all of our different diagrams. FN, the normal force. Is it being supported by a surface? The boy is being supported by the slide itself. So we're going to make sure we draw the line angled so that it is perpendicular and creates a 90 degree angle with our surface going this way. FA, applied force, a push or a pull from someone or something that's not a rope-like object. If it was rope-like, then we would call that FT, the force of tension. I don't see anything in contact with the person besides the surface that he's sitting on. So there is no FA or FT. Now is the boy sliding or trying to slide? In this case, he is moving down the slide. Now if he's going down the slide, the force of friction is going to oppose his motion. So we're going to make sure the arrow points exactly in the opposite direction of the way that he is moving. The very last one, air resistance. So basically in all situations where someone is moving and they're not in a vacuum, there is technically air resistance, but a high majority of the time it's not included. So in this uh, diagram, technically it would be in here and it would be pointing the same direction as the force of kinetic friction. It would be opposing his motion, but because it's not very significant, like I said, it's not included in most of the diagrams. Okay, so that concludes our first one. So let's go ahead and head over to our second one. Our second one is a speaker that is suspended from the ceiling. I'm going to go ahead and just put my FG in the diagram first because I know it's there. I know it's straight down. And then I see two rope like objects connected to it and they are pulling the speaker upwards. I'm going to make sure I put two forces of tension because there are two ropes attached to it. So a common beginner mistake would that would be that one FT would be drawn as opposed to two, but there are two ropes there. So I'm going to put two FTs. Um, so when you're thinking about the direction of the force, you want to make sure you're considering the way that it pushes or pulls the object that you're focusing on. So some people will take a look at this rope and they say, well, isn't it pulling down and isn't it pulling up? Um, it is depending on what you're focusing on. So if you're focusing on the ceiling, the rope is pulling down on the ceiling. If you're focusing on the speaker, it's pulling up on the speaker. So you want to make sure that your focus is on a single object and then you draw the arrow based on how that object is being affected by the rope or whatever force you're looking at. Okay, so for our next one, we have a woman is being pulled along the snow on a sled. So as I said before, you have to kind of focus your attention on a certain object. So I'm going to focus my attention on the woman and the sled together. So I'm going to treat that like one unit and then draw my force diagram from there. So I have my force of gravity pulling straight down. We have another rope like material here. So we want to include a force of tension. And then in addition, because it is on the snow, it's being supported by a surface. We want to make sure there's a normal force pointing up perpendicular from the surface because it's being supported. So it's basically counteracting our FG. And then also because it's being pulled, it is moving. There is a force of kinetic friction that is opposing the slide. So we have force of kinetic friction off to the right, and then that completes that diagram. All right, now for the final one, we have a person pushes on a refrigerator and it won't budge. So in this drawing, I'm gonna go ahead and focus on the refrigerator. So with that being said, I'm gonna put the FG pointing straight down as usual. The refrigerator is sitting on a surface. The normal force is pushing up 
perpendicular from the surface to hold the refrigerator up. And then we have the person pushing on it. Remember, if there's someone or something pushing on it that's not a rope, then we're gonna call that FA in applied force. Okay, and the fourth and final one is a little tricky. Now, if you really take a look at the forces, you have one up and one down. So you have two forces that are exactly in the opposite direction of each other. Those are canceling each other out. And now we have the applied force pointing to the left. Now, if there weren't any forces to the right, then it should for sure be moving and accelerating to the left. So with that in mind, there has to be a force that is pushing back to the right. Okay, now there's nothing else in contact it, with it besides the floor itself, so it is actually static friction. The refrigerator is trying to budge, it's trying to slide as a person is pushing it, but the contact with the ground, the roughness of the surface, is pushing back against that FA and canceling out, therefore the refrigerator remains at rest. Okay, so that pretty much sums up um, how you sort of go about drawing your force diagrams. I typically like to draw the forces on the actual picture, um, depending on the preference of the, the teacher you're working with or your own preferences. If you draw a free body diagram, you might basically draw the same sort of thing that I'm drawing, but just on a single dot. So say for example, I was redrawing my very first diagram over here and I was making it a free body diagram. I could just go ahead and just draw something very similar to what I drew, but obviously free of the actual object or body itself, um, which is the same sort of idea, but you're basically just creating the diagram away from the picture and then focus on like a single like particle, but a specific spot. Okay, so that sums up on our main ideas of how to draw a force diagram. Thank you for watching and listening.